Hi there and welcome to this short overview of Tableau Server PostgreSQL Database Schema and Data Synchronization. In this case, I'll be working with Tableau Server version 9.1 and Microsoft SQL Server 2014, um, but I would imagine that this code would also be mostly applicable to later versions of Tableau Server. As always, all the code used in this video can be downloaded from my OneDrive folder. Uh, with the link provided in the blog post at www.bicortex.com. That's www.bicortex.com, where you can also find a more comprehensive description of the actual solution. This video is just a walkthrough of the core functionality that this solution provides. So for um, instructions on how to enable Tableau Server, database access, uh, PostgreSQL, schema view, um, code samples, etc. Um, please head over to my website. All right, let's go ahead and kick this demo off with a linked server validation. Um, I have already provisioned the linked server called Tab PostgreSQL Prod. So if we run this, uh, we simply get the message that the command completed successfully. Now, if I was to replace it with some random string as the linked server name, um, you can see that an error is thrown. So in this case, even though the output is very limited, it is what we expect providing that the link server referenced here does in fact exist. Um, we can also select from a table um, to ensure that we can authenticate and have permissions to select from the workgroup database on a Tableau server. What we're going to do now is create a Tableau DB copy database um, which will house all the Tableau Server PostgreSQL database tables. Uh, we can run this query to ensure that the database with this name does not exist on our SQL Server instance. So um, once that's confirmed, let's go ahead and create a new staging database. You can also see that as part of this statement, I'm creating a new schema that all Tableau Server tables will fall under, um, simply called tab. Now that the database has been created, we can validate its existence and we can see that we do get an output from the Sys databases system table uh, with the expected name, etc. Our database is in place, so let's create two views containing SQL Server and PostgreSQL reserved words. Two stop procedures that will do all the heavy lifting for us when it comes to schema and data synchronization. And finally, a small table, which will contain Tableau Server table names, we do not wish to synchronize. Again, if you stumbled upon this video somewhere on YouTube, you can find out more about how all these um, objects came about and why they are an essential part of this solution on my website. So I'll simply run all these statements and leave my blog post to provide all the answers if you happen to have any questions at this point. Going back to the main view, we can confirm that we now have one table, two views, and two stop procedures created on the Tableau DB copy database. Okay, so now that we have set the stage, so to speak, um, for the schema and data synchronization, let's kick off our schema syncing stop proc. What's happening when USB check remote Tableau server table schema changes stop proc is run? Um, SQL Server will pull PostgreSQL metadata using the linked server connection, things like um, object names, schema names, um, data types, character maximum length for each Tableau Server table, um, etc., and try to compare it to SQL Server metadata on the Tableau DB copy database. If any discrepancies are found, it will dynamically generate drop and create table SQL statement and execute it on the target database. Um, once that's complete, the metadata check is repeated once more, and if the differences are not resolved, um, an error will be raised. We can again confirm that we now have a bunch of tables created on the tab schema um, beyond the one created previously on the DBO schema. Now, this store procedure not only can reconcile individual tables, but also column level um, incompatibilities. 
Um, for example, looking at the table called schedules, we can see that it contains a column called name. If we were to remove that column from this table and validate that in fact it got dropped, we can now repair or resolve any dichotomies between source and target um, by simply rerunning the stop block again. And you can see from the output that the table which got modified was picked up um, during the execution and recreated to conform to the source schema, that is the Tableau Server PostgreSQL database. Um, so if we were to run this check again, we can now see that the column name is no longer missing from this table. We now have our workgroup Tableau Server database schema recreated, but naturally none of the tables will contain any data. We can confirm this querying SQL Server system tables, and as you can see, there is zero records returned from every single table on the TAP schema. In order to copy or synchronize the data, not just the schema across, we are going to use the second store procedure called USB Tableau Remote Schema Data Sync. What we have here is a simple cursor which will loop through each table on the tab schema and copy the data across using merge SQL statement which gets created on the fly as this code runs. I encourage you to look at the code behind the stop rock as the real value that comes from implementing this comes from the fact that no column to column mapping is hard coded. The merge statement is created on the fly based on the source and target metadata. This is going to take a few minutes, so I'll pause the video and come back once the cursor finishes executing. We can now confirm that most of the tables have been populated and to ensure that the data is consistent between the source and target server, we can run a simple accept SQL statement on one of the tables comparing what's in the source with uh, what has been copied across to our Tableau DB copy database. Um, that's all for this demo. And again, if you'd like to get access to all the code used in this video, please head over to www.bicortex.com where you will find a download link. Thanks for watching.